Hey, what's up guys? It's Math with 97 and today I'm bringing you guys some Madden 13 gameplay. Here we have uh, sort of the first episode of the St. Louis Rams Connected Career Mode. And as you can see, some of the roster updates. Uh, this is week 6 or 7, I think. And as you can see, I did sign Chad Johnson at the wide receiver. Also picked up Dominic Hickson, but he went down with an injury, so we got the addition of Donald Jones. As you can see, we picked up Jake Ballard at the tight end position because I don't know why the Giants dropped him for last season. We got Kareem McKenzie at the right tackle, Sean Merriman at the right end. We also got Albert Hainsworth at defensive tackle, so really just sort of signing some big name players. And there wasn't really too many other additions after that. We did trade to get Casey Matthews. Uh, and I forget who all we traded, but we did get Casey Matthews. No new corners, and we did get Graham Gano out of the free agency at the kicker position. And there are a lot of things I need to cover in uh, the upcoming videos, but I'm going to go ahead. This is a pretty long video for Ultimate Team, so I'm going to sort of give you guys sort of what's going to be happening in the St. Louis Rams connected career. Now, up to this point, I believe we were three and three, three and two. Uh, we had lost the first two games of the season, then went on a three-game win streak. So, and as we came into Miami to play the Dolphins here, looking to get a four-win streak. Uh, I do try to run a lot with Steven Jackson because this is pretty much a run-dominated team. Um, I also need to really step up my run game. I'm not too great with that. I end up going to the pass a lot. And since this team's not that great in the passing game, it's sort of... i got to try and uh, mix up my strategies, uh, play to this team's standards. Uh, so this is going to be a pretty interesting series to bring to the channel. Um, uh, also doing a Cincinnati Bengals connected careers, but that one's pretty much uh, more of a passing team as I did some updates for it. I'll probably have to update that when I start that series. I don't do player uh, career modes because I don't like being limited to just the one player. Uh, my franchise modes, I even used to pick multiple teams. So I'm going to go ahead and just stick to the uh, franchise sort of connected career mode additions with the coach. And a lot of issues in this game. We had a lot of protection issues. The uh, blocking up front kept breaking down. Didn't get too much out of the passing game. Not much protection. You see, back-to-back -back sacks. We lose 22 yards. As Sam Bradford can't get the protection he needs. And he just gets drilled on back-to-back -back plays. But yeah, so these uh, connected careers are sort of going to be kind of opposites, and it should bring some interesting series to my channel, and that pass was nowhere near given. And as you can see, it was a 3 nothing lead for Miami, and I'm not going to do a whole lot of defense gameplays in my videos because they're going to be super long. Um, I know this video is going to be at least over 10 minutes, and it's probably going to be like that for almost every episode. Until I get, until I can uh, work with the editing software and figure out what all I can do with the software, but for now I'm just gonna sorta not quite as edited heavily, so it's just gonna sorta be me playing whatever I capture and what I choose not to capture. And Reggie Bush doing a lot of flashy moves here, but he does get brought down. But some some channel updates I really feel like I need to cover in this video. Uh, with my Roxio issues and stuff like that. Um, so far, especially seeing the new Elgato thing that they did, that they released, sort of an update to enhance their live, live streamings with the beta, I'm thinking that when as soon as I save up the money for it, I'm probably going to go ahead and buy the Elgato. I mean, for now, the Roxio is okay. Uh, I can still capture in 480p. I do have some issues even with the 480p recording. I didn't buy it for the for that type of quality though. I got it for an HD capture card, and it's not really recording anything. It's getting all pixelated, which I don't understand. Cause sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, more often than not, it doesn't work. So I mean, until I can get an update for this, I've tried to contact Roxio, but their customer support is crap. So I mean. I gotta wait for an update or something to come out so I can get this fixed, hopefully. But, I mean, it's better than nothing, I guess. I'm able to... I was able to get a capture card. I'm able to have more professional uh, recording here. It's a nice pass to the rookie, Brian Quick. But, 
I mean, this Roxio, I really had it looking at the preview and stuff for it, all the advertisements and the hype build up to it. I mean, it even looked like it was an underrated product, in my opinion. From what I had seen, it looked like it was underrated. It looked like it could be the next big uh, capture card on the market, but it turns out with poor customer service and the product wasn't all it's cracked up to be. I mean, I've only had it for, I've had it for maybe two weeks or so, a little around two weeks, but I mean, still, it's managed to disappoint me that much. I mean, I guess two or two weeks isn't very long to judge a product. I haven't really had it that long, but still, I mean, I was expecting more out of this. And that pass I should have never thrown, but I got kind of lucky there. Saw Chad Johnson open, but I hadn't seen him at the time, so I was able to hook up with Chris Givens, the rookie. Um, See, so yeah, like I was saying, I'll probably... I mean, a lot can change by the time I'm able to save up for the Elgato. Uh, gonna see if I can possibly get a job over the summer, or maybe like, I don't know, like a part-time, you know, anything work like two, three hours, I don't know, whatever I can get. Hopefully try and save up some money quicker. Uh, so I'll be able to get this, because I really want to get my YouTube gameplay flowing, like, start off on my YouTube journey. Uh, my goals, I'd kind of like to get up to uh, 300 subscribers, that's probably my goal for, like, overall on YouTube. Um, I'm going to sort of be tracking it, though, my goals are going to sort of come and go at sort of 10 mark, like, each, every 10 subscribers is sort of a goal. So I did hit 20 the other day, but then somebody unsubscribed. So I dropped down to 19, but I'm not going to take away that 20 subscriber mark because, I mean, I'm just stubborn like that. I don't feel like making the change because I know I'll get it back. That's just who I am. I'm not, I'm a pretty stubborn person. I mean, that subscriber, it'll come back. And hopefully I'll be able to get more. But like I said, I'm, with like that pass was just, everybody got in the way. Too tight. You know, that pass should have been thrown. There was too many people there. But, yeah, like I said, I would kind of like to get up to 300 subscribers in the long run. But, I mean, this Roxio issue is sort of holding me back. I mean, I really would like to have the HD capture card, and it would have made things possibly a bit quicker as far as subscribers and gaining them goes. But, I mean, especially with all the setbacks, this Roxio issue is not going to make things very easy for my YouTube journey. I mean, hopefully I'll be able to get most of the hardships out of the way first. I mean, with all this capture card issues. Uh, this is making me regret not waiting to get the Elgato. Because, I mean, that up until the release of the Roxio HD was my choice. Back on some of my videos on my older channel, I'd gotten more... I'd gotten almost all suggestions for Elgato, none for any other capture card. Uh, Hapage was definitely out of the question. I do not like Hapage. Looking at their products, I mean, they're a more official company, but their products just don't seem to have all the perks that some of the newer ones have had. And I had so many suggestions for the Elgato, but you know, I figured, you know what? The Roxio is cheaper, I can afford it now, along with all the other games that are coming out. Because with the Elgato, I probably would have would not have been able to get either WA-13 or Black Ops 2, and those two s games I figured would be crucial to the start of my channel. So, I mean, I had to sort of be, have some sort of spending management there. Nice completion of Brandon Gibson here for the touchdown on the street. And just like that, the Rams take their first lead of the game. It's 10-3, to pending with the extra point, which will be good thanks to the leg of Graham Gano. So it's now 10-3. to And real quick, the re I had dropped Zerline just because, I mean, that's sort of the person I am. I don't like in like Madden and stuff like that, having people, you know, like baseless characters. And right here is sort of a showcase of some Roxio issues. Right there, I just missed a Steven Jackson. He had a huge run because my Roxio was glitching out. I got this pop-up saying no signal even though I was recording it. So it was 10-3 to 3 here still. We uh, sort of driving down the field. 
But, I mean, that was probably Steven Jackson, one of his biggest carries of the game. And we missed it because of the Razio issues. And there, that was a tight pass to Chad Johnson. Chad Johnson wasn't much of a factor in this game. He does get a few touches, but not too much here. And, like I was saying about the offensive line, that's the whole reason why I picked up Kareem McKenzie. I didn't want to go too big there to try and like, replace every position. But I wanted to try and add some more depth to the offensive line so I'd be able to get more of a passing game established. And so, lining up in the I formation here. Uh, but yeah, if you have any ideas on how to fix Roxio issues, if you could go check out... Nice, nice juke there by Steven Jackson. But anyway, if you could go check out my uh, test video, my W12 test video with CM Punk and Ryback, where it has sort of the pixelate, pixelation issues with the capture. If you have any ideas, we can go check that out. And maybe give me some feedback, send me a private message, uh, post a comment on that video, post a comment on this video. Whatever you want to do, whatever's easiest for you. But if you have any idea with how to fix some of these issues, uh, let me know. Then that would be greatly appreciated. I have had se several suggestions, but I mean, none of them have really done too much. Uh, I've tried several different things, and I haven't been able to fix it. Issues still the same. Backup running back John Clay comes in, and he goes nowhere. Injures a Dolphins defender on the play, but that's not going to count for much. Unable to get into the end zone for the touchdown. So we line up back out of the eye formation. We're going to bring in Steven Jackson this time. He's more secure. There we go. Stiff arms the defender and scores the touchdown on third and two. Steven Jackson. Big touchdown there. We're going to go up 17 to 3 with the extra point from Gano. And as you see the instant replay, he just shoves that guy out of the way. He would not be tackled. Steven Jackson, he is our iron running back. And uh gonna try to look to get a new running back uh running back. Hopefully in a few seasons because Steven Jackson he is twenty nine, so he'll be good for now, but not in the long run. And as you can see, Steven Jackson, ninety seven yards and a touchdown on the day. But what I meant in the long run was depending on how long this series would go on for, I'd like to get it up to maybe five seasons. But between this, the Bengals Connected Careers, Universe Mode, those are going to be three major series on my channel. Plus, whatever comes out with Black Ops 2, I'll probably cover some sort of stories there. I don't know exactly, but, I mean, there's going to be some big series on my channel. Nice completion of Lance Kendrick's there. But, uh, Steven Jackson, I'll probably be able to get him, I don't know, for the five seasons, he might be there the entire time, but I might need to pick up somebody new. And... I mean, he'll be good for at least two or three seasons, but depending on cap issues and stuff like that, I don't know exactly. But uh, so, some blocking issues that occur with almost any team I run with. I mean, I did, I do get up to 100 yards with my running backs, which is sort of my goal with running backs is to get them up to the 100-yard mark on usually per game. And right here, I should not have thrown that pass picked off by Jonathan Wade. Steven Jackson's able to chase him down. But I should not have thrown that pass. That was a terrible, terrible pass. I could have waited for somebody to get open, or if not, taken the sack. It's better than a turnover. But now we're back out of the defense. But, I mean, a lot of the times, my offensive line just crumbles. Block it. Like, the blocking isn't as good as it could be. Defenders take wrong routes, wrong angles to block the people. Or, like, sometimes I'll just run into an open hole, and then as soon as I get there, the blocker just shrugs off the defender and the defender tackles me right away. So, I mean, issues like that are sort of annoying. That was not a good pass from Gerard. And real quick, uh, there's this one kid at my school who does some stuff on GarageBand, and he sort of makes some cool music, so, I mean, I might try to have sort of like a background theme on my commentaries. I might try to use some of that, and I'm surprised that wasn't picked off. Usually, those user picks work out pretty well. But anyway, like I was saying, uh, he does some stuff on SoundCloud, and I mean, just to try and get some beats out there, I don't want to try and get like any sort of copyright, and that's sort of a, the offensive line issue I was talking about. He just runs right into the defender, I try to get around him, and he just gets, he just falls down. Also part of the Infinity Engine, but what are you going to do? 
But like I was saying, uh, I don't want to like get into any copyright issues. I know I had the video with uh, the Road to UCW recap, which I still need to get that match going. But I was hoping to get my Roxy into H into an HD capture format before I did that match, but I might not be able to. I might just have to do it in 480p. But like I was saying, I don't want to. I don't. Uh, I had a lot of, uh, not copyrighted music, but, I mean, it was blocked in Germany, that's all, I, I'm pretty sure that was the only country it was blocked in, but I don't want to do that too often, because I don't want to get any copyright strikes on this channel, it would not be good. Another nice pass to the rookie quick there, he's got 364, and here a quick stat recap on the screen, as you can see, Bradford obviously out doing garage, we've got the 14 point lead, so, of course he's going to be doing better. But yeah, I don't want to get any copyright strikes, that wouldn't be good, as my Roxio lags up there. Uh, that kind of issue pisses me off, because, I mean, it shouldn't be doing that. That's not why I bought this capture card. I bought it because I thought it would be a good product, and also for a bit of price, but that wasn't... The main reason was just because I thought it looked like a good product, an underrated product, and I figured I would be one of the commentators to give it a shot, and that turns out to have backfired on me, so, I don't know. But, hopefully that lag in, that lag issue right there won't mess up the commentary, because I know sometimes when they get the lag patches, they don't upload for some reason. Brian Quick there, another completion. Uh, in the absence of Steve Smith, who went down with an injury, he's stepped up big in the passing game. But Steve Smith returns next week, so we should probably see Quick drop back to his normal role. As Smith will probably take over the number two, Gibson will be going back to the three. And then we'll have Quick at the number four, so I mean, maybe on some play action streaks or something. Out of the spread, uh, spread out the offense, and we'll, we'll have to see how we can figure in Quick. Uh, he's definitely not going to be a Muhammad Sanu like I build up Sanu. My Bengals connected career, and I was trying something here, trying to fake out the defense, sort of move the tight end over, and think that I was going left and go right, but that didn't work. Jackson got tackled, and see, this commentary is already up to 17 minutes, so I mean, this is going to be a long video. I might have to break it in two parts. I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. John Clay, we brought, he came in, tried to catch him off guard with a halfback draw. So it's going to come up to a Graham Gano field goal once again. It's 20 to 3. And because of the way that I record my commentaries, I can't just get it all in one patch. And with Steven Jackson sort of getting knocked backward on a few plays, I decided to bring Cadillac in. But since I can't record the whole gameplay in one patch, I have to sort of break up the commentaries. So there might be a bit, a bit of audio lag, or like I might say something and it happens two seconds later. Or I'm, might something might happen and then I mention it two like two seconds later. I don't know. I know that's happened on some of my previous previous videos, and it's usually been more after. So I mean, that halfback draw did not work. So it's fourth and inches, and I was sort of getting tired. It was sort of a back and forth punt thing for a while. So I decided to just go for it here. I was sort. Of, I mean, like I said, I'm a stubborn person. So I mean, if things get too repetitive, or you know. Same old, same old issues. I decided to just break the trend, go for it. Sam Bradford on the QB sneak, able to get the first down. Koa Misi's got eight tackles. He's obviously a big contributor to the Dolphins' defense, possibly with that injury. I never did see who got injured. But here, Cadillac Williams, a nice juke, which was sort of pointless. He's hit for a loss of two. And this Cameron Wake of the Dolphins. But yeah. So I gotta try and figure out how to build this Rams defense. I'm sort of just letting my uh, scouting points build up as I try to figure out who I want to scout. And here, a nice screen to Cadillac Williams. I had to cut to the outside. There was nowhere else to go. So I did manage to turn that into a six-yard gain as we reach the 19-minute mark in this commentary. Wow, this is pretty long. Uh, if I can figure out how to break the commentary up into two parts, and I don't know, it might just come out as one giant video. Nice completion of Gibson there. We're able to get the first down, but a fumble. That is not what we want to see. As Gibson just got speared by the defender. Some WWE moves here. He gets speared and fumbles the ball. Like, helmet to ball contact. Probably knocked it off. I don't know. But he had 85 yards on the day and a touchdown. So he was 
up to that point, he was making pretty good use of his touches. Gerard tries to run it here. He does gain two, but, I mean, he doesn't go too far. As we really had locked down on the Dolphins' offense this game, we did a lot of uh, pretty good defense. Some uh, nice tackles. We were able to hold up Reggie Bush. He didn't get too many yards out of the run game. Gerard didn't get too much out of the passing game. A lot of incomplete passes. Had a few interceptions. And a big sack for, right here from Long. As he was the highlight player earlier in this game. And he finally proves why he gets his first sack of the game. And as they line up in the spread formation, they get the four wide receivers. Gonna defend the pass here because I wouldn't expect them to run it to Bush. Unless they go with a surprise draw, but they don't. And over the middle to Brian Hartline, but our defense is able to make the tackle for a short gain, so let up the short pass as long as they can make the tackle. And with them being down 17, they're going to go for it here. Uh, Reggie Bush, I'm sort of trying to line up my defense, trying to play more pass defensive here. I don't know what to do with Merriman now. The ball was not even close to Reggie Bush, it was overthrown by David Gerrard. And that was incomplete, which would force a turnover. And we would get the ball back. Cadillac Williams still in the backfield. As I think I pretty much subbed Jackson out for the game. There we went over to Cal Calvin Johnson. Chad Johnson, and he, just, he did not want to go down there. A nice 34-yard gain. And that would actually be his only catch of the game. As Bradford hits the 300-yard mark. He has one touchdown and one pick. Try to get that to two touchdowns and a pick. Try and sort of make him more touchdowns and interceptions, which I usually like to get. We had three trips to the red zone, but two out of the three were field goals and one was a touchdown. So we're hoping to sort of break that, even it out, get another touchdown here. And so we're going to line up in a run formation, bring in Cadillac Williams. Have the three tight ends. We got the jumbo set here. And Cadillac, he's going to run into his defender, only a three-yard gain, tackled by Cameron Wake. So we're going to line up for another run play here. And the Bengals, I'll just say right now that the Rams and the Bengals playbooks are two completely different playbooks. The blast here is completely different than a blast in actually most other teams. And Cole Meese reports 10th tackle. But, I mean, it didn't matter here. We were up by 17, so I mean, a field goal wouldn't really do too much, and I wanted that touchdown. So Steven Jackson comes into the game here on fourth down. We're going clutch. Slide Ballard over to the right side, because that's where we're going. They're able to create a hole, and Steven Jackson gets his second touchdown on the day. Because that was just a little one-yard scamper. We're going to go up 27-3, to with 3 minutes 18 seconds left to go in the fourth, so there's not much time left. Steven Jackson, 21 carries, 111 yards, and two touchdowns. Here we, and here we are. The game had ended. We walked out with the win over the Miami Dolphins. So that was a pretty, pretty much a blowout win there. Uh, we did end up getting uh, the score ended up being 34 to 10. Dolphins were able to score a late minute, uh, last second touchdown there at the very end. And we were able to score a special teams touchdown, but I was not recording at the time. So I was unable to get that on footage, but we did win 34-10. to So yeah, we're able to go 4-2 on the season. Uh, out of the quarterbacks, pretty much, even with less passes, Sam Bradford outplayed David Gerrard. Almost doubled in yardage. Same amount of picks and interceptions, though. 10 for 19 for Bush. Jackson was able to get 111 plus two touchdowns. So I think it's safe to say Steven Jackson now played Reggie Bush. Quick was the only receiver in the game with 100 yards uh, receiving. Uh, Brandon Gibson was able to get a touchdown. The only receiver to get a touchdown in this game. Calvin, or Chad Johnson with a uh, 34 yard completion. So that was pretty much it there. Graham Gano made two field goals and his longest was 25. So they were both within the red zone. So thanks for watching. Smash that like button. Peace.